church. Good morning, church. Come on, if you're able, if you can, please rise up and give God some praise this morning. Oh, come on, everybody, let's give him your best praise. Your best praise. Can you appreciate the fact that God woke you up this morning? You had the use of your lamb. You slept peacefully and safely last night. That you had shelter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now, come on now. We can do better than that. Let's see if we can shake this place up. I know we can shake this place up. I know we can move the foundation of this house of prayer. We can give our all to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on, come on. We pray for those who are very good. Put it on the level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray and everything else. Hallelujah. Talking about the new. Hallelujah. But we are here to lift up the name of God this morning and give Him glory and thanks for all the good stuff, for everything that He has done and that He will continue to do for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're happy about that, come on and let God know you are. Hallelujah, open up your mouth and say, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Don't hold it back. Oh, give it God praise. Oh, give it God glory. Oh, give it up his name. Oh, magnify his kingdom. Oh, give it him thanks for the good things that he has done in your life. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh our soul, the all that is within. We bless your holy name this morning. Hallelujah. And as we begin our worship experience this morning, and we come together in unity, love, and peace with one another and with God. We just take a few moments to set aside our own issues, our own circumstances, our own concerns, and we give God our total attention. Yes. Our total attention yes. to thank Him, to praise Him, to glorify him. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Yes. Heavenly Father, we your people come here right now, God. Come and humbly to your throne of grace, seeking mercy and grace. In this, the time of need, we thank you, God, for everything that you have done. We thank you, God, and we understand and believe that you have the whole world in the palm of your hand. We thank you, God, for everything that has happened, even the calamities and the tragedies. They are a blessing from you. We pray for all of those affected by natural disasters, storms, wars, rumors of wars, unnecessary killing of people in foreign lands and in our country because of what other men decide. 
desire to do. But we, your people, God, we recognize you as sovereign. And there's nothing that you don't know about. We thank you, God, for the souls and lives of the people that were lost in tragedy, storms, weather, wars, and conflicts. We ask that you comfort their families, God, and that you give them and give us all a strength that is not our own. Because we know that because of your love and your strength, hallelujah, that you're going to bring us through all things. We thank you, God, as a united body of believers, God, even for our global, domestic, state, and county governments, God, and all those appointed and elected in crucial positions, God. Those that are running for elected offices, God, we ask that your will be done. You already know the outcome, God. We ask that you bless us and strengthen us, God, to follow and be obedient to you we go through these times of adjustment. Lord, we thank you, God. We all know that you brought us too far to leave us now. There is so much that you have done for us that we don't even realize, God. There is so much that you protected us from, God, that we can't even imagine, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the good things. We thank you for the difficulties that we've had in our lives, God. And we know that your way of calling us closer to you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God. We just lift up our hearts and our spirit, God, to give you glory. We thank you for your presence this morning, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb, God, that has purified us and set us free, God. We thank you for your Son, who died on Calvary for the forgiveness of all of our sins. Hallelujah, God. We thank you that you are a good and loving God. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being in this place, God. Thank you for allowing us to Worship you, God, to praise you, God, to lift you up, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that we can do better today than we did yesterday. Hallelujah. This morning, God, we thank you for the deacons and the ushers, oh God. We thank you for the trustees, oh God. We thank you for uh, the musicians this morning, God. We thank you for the elders and our bearers, God, and the respective places, God. We thank you for each and every soul that is here this morning as you have commanded and desired it to be, oh God, to hear the word of God. We bless your name, God. We ask you to bless our pastor this morning, God, as you come before us, God, with a word from on high. We ask that you bless his wife, oh God, that you just bless her, God, in a mighty way, oh God, and be the comfort and help me for our pastor, God. We thank you for all of the children, God, all of the grandchildren, the nieces, the nephews, oh God. We thank you for the entire generation. our first responders, God. We thank you for the police department, oh God. We thank you for the nurses and the doctors, oh God, that are there in an 
extreme circumstances to help us through. God, we thank you for the teachers, the aides, oh God, the cross and guards, oh God, all the staff and all our schools, oh God, that they look over our young ones, oh God, from kindergarten on up through high school, God, we bless the name of Jesus, oh God, that you provide protection, oh God. That you keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger, oh God. We just give you glory, God, right now, God. We sink down into our hearts and the depths of our soul, God. To lift you up, God, to give you glory, God, as much as we can. To thank you all we can for this day that you have made. To let us and allow us to be glad and rejoice in it, God. We thank you for the joy. Let our worship be genuine. Let your presence in this place be pleased with all that we render unto you. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world, who gave his life for us, that we give him praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on and put your hands together again. To give you a give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, please. Come on, lift him up. Come on, man.
stone. Yes. He's able. He's, able. He's God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Truly, it's all for the time. People who cannot keep God's gift and he loves to cheer for giver. Amen. Amen. Hey, Peter, no matter how hard you try. Amen. Amen. If you don't know how to have a time to offer the number, oh, please raise your hand or else we get one to you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear yeah, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time yes. to give back to you, Lord. A portion, Lord, of what you have blessed us with, God. And Father, we ask you, Father, that we give deep from our hearts that you continue to bless us, God. That we'll be able to use these things. Look better than our King. We ask you this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you're open, I plan to see in good soul. Looking for a great harvest. In Jesus' name.
condition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Verse 29. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this teaching and teaching moment. Pray now, God, that you release your power, your presence, your anointing upon this, your vessel. That we may preach with power and teach with clarity. Anoint the ears, the hearts, the minds of your children, that they might believe, receive, explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we give you all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise. For in Jesus' name, that we pray. And in our heart said, Amen. Let me see it in the presence of the Lord. Uh, today, we want to speak from these words. A request for unity. A request for unity. My brothers and my sisters, I believe that we're living in critical times where there are so much division. All right. Division in our world, division in our country, our counties, our cities, division in our communities, and even in or within our churches. But the Bible teaches us, the Bible declares that together we stand and divided we will fall. We're experiencing a fall or falling today worldwide because everyone thinks go their own personal but I want to request or ask of us today here and elsewhere, I want to ask for unity. All right. I believe if, if just the church would get unified, mm -hmm. if the church would come together, then the world would be better. Mm -hmm. Simply because God believes the hands of the world. He didn't leave his ways in the hands of the world. He left his ways in the hands of the church. Amen. His chosen people, the call out one, the ecclesia, the body of Christ. He didn't leave the leadership of the world in the hands of the president. Amen. Although many times he's been pushed to the uh, to, to high estate. But he didn't leave it in the hands of the president or nor the governor, not the judges. He left it in the hands of the people of God. Amen. So, I want to encourage us today to make sure that we understand the importance of keeping the unity in our church, our churches, and all the way to the world. My brothers and my sisters, it may sound a little minute. It, it may sound even trivial that we have to deal with unity even in this age or this present age. But because of man's ways, because of man's inconsistencies, that we have to deal with this because not only was that problem in the first century church, it's a problem in the 21st century church. Right. Paul, Paul, the writer here in our lesson, Paul here is pleading for the gospel worthy Christians to carry out or to carry on for Jesus the Christ. To carry on for Jesus without the prop or without the support of his presence. Paul was writing this letter to the church of Philippi to do what thus says the Lord, whether I be there or whether I'm not there. All right. That's right. You know, there are some people that just they want to do good when they're, they're in the presence of some people. 
But, but, but you need to make sure and very sure that you carry out what thus says the Lord, whether, whether, whether I'm here in your presence or whether I'm not in your presence. Paul is saying to them, let your manner, watch this now, let your manner of life be consistent with the truth of the gospel, whether I came or whether I come to see you or be absent from you. Paul is writing this letter to the church that he instituted, the church that he started, and said, whether I be there or not, carry out your responsibilities as children, as the church of God. All right. I want to encourage us today, remember that this is personal. You must understand to carry out the truth of the gospel. Whether, whether I be in your presence or whether somebody else who you bow to be in your presence, make sure that you carry out the truth of God. If they were truly Christ's or belong to Christ, they would look to Christ for needed strength, for need strength and wisdom. So whether the apostle, whether the pastor, whether the preacher is with you or absent from you, as Paul says, Paul hoped to hear a good report of their efforts and of their affairs. I'm looking for a good report of you, whether you are at the game, whether you're in the home, or whether you're in church, or whether you're in the marketplace, I really look for a good report from you as being able to carry out the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what Paul does here in our text, Paul makes an urgent request for the church at Philippi. So what did Paul do? What did he say? Well, first of all, Paul requests that they stand. That's so important because so many people that said earlier are falling. It's so important that you stand. Stand for what? Stand for the truth. Amen. Stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ because the gospel of Jesus Christ is truth. The old saying when I grew up that if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Amen. So, 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 so my, my first point today as Paul requests the church at Philippi to stand. Where is that? It's in verse 27. The sea calls. Look, 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 look what he says. He says in the sea calls that you stand fast in one spirit. You got to know there are plenty of spirits out there. But you got to stand fast in one spirit, which is the spirit of Christ. The basis for this whole request is, is the fact that there are is a warfare going on. There's a warfare going on on, your, on the battlefield of your mind. Amen. Constantly. Amen. There's a warfare going on between, between good and evil, and you have to make some choices. Amen. The, the, the saints are in, engaged in a great conflict. So Paul tells them the battle is with your adversary. In other words, your battle is with your enemy. Battle should be against brothers and sisters in Christ. All right. The battle should be your enemies, your adversaries. Look at verse 28. The next verse says, and in nothing terrified by your what? Adversaries or your enemies. The battle is with your adversaries. And he adds that it is the same con conflict that you saw me in. Mm -hmm. Say, I had to go through the same conflict. So, so, so don't think that because I, I am the apostle, I started the church, I initiated the church, I had to go through some sort of the same battles because the adversary is still busy. The adversary is still evil. He's still mean. He, he, he don't like you. 
So Paul says, stand, and he literally says, stand together against your adversaries. Listen carefully. The gospel had and still has its adversaries. The gospel of Jesus Christ still has its enemies. And the saints will have to stand fast in one spirit with one mind. The problem with the church today, the 21st century church, is that we fail to stand together in one spirit with one mind. The one spirit, what does that refer to? It refers to the Holy Spirit. I said a few minutes ago, there are many spirits out there, but we are talking about one spirit, which is the spirit of the triune God, the Holy Spirit. The one spirit present in all the members of the body of Christ. If you are a child of God, you are saved by the grace of God, then that one spirit should reside in you. Amen. The scripture says, the moment you believe the Holy Spirit, you shall receive. Amen. So, so that spirit is in you, in the members of the body of Christ. The one mind refers to, or has reference to, a unified purpose and a unified program with no divided opinion. All right. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, a lot of times the church can't move forward because we got too many people that's not of the same mind. Yes. Amen. Paul oh, wrote to the church at Rome and said that this mind be in you. It was also in Christ Jesus. So, 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 so one mind. I mean that we're all one accord and no divided opinions. They were to stand united because the enemy, the adversary, would attempt to divide and destroy them. I've never in my 70 plus years have witnessed so much division as it is today. Mm. Yeah. And the devil want to divide you so he can conquer you. Yeah. Mm. He want to divide and destroy you. And if he can keep us ununified, if you will, then he has a toll on conquering yeah. the church. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Listen, listen, listen to what Paul says when you write to the church of Ephesus. He says, Paul and apostle, apostle Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are in Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Here it is. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now turn over to, to, to chapter 4, verse 1. This is what it says. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk, here it is, worthy of the location wherewith you are called. With all loneliness, meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity, here it is, of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope. And oh no. Stay. Yes, the devil wants you to stay. He wants you to stoop for stand. Yes. Believers in Christ, those who are, those of us who have professed to be, be the children of God, we are one in Christ. Amen. And each of us must go all out to God that oneness. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Nothing, I, be, I believe nothing, absolutely nothing is more harmful to the unsaved than to discover 
division among Christians. And we see it all the time. We show our division in the midst of unsaved people. How are you going to draw them to Christ when you're showing division? Why are you, how are you going to draw the unsaved to Christ when you are always scandalizing your brother and your sister's name? All right. You're talking about them in a negative way. Listen, if Satan can disrupt the ranks of God's children, he has won a great victory. He knows, Satan knows, that a divided house cannot stand. He knows that, so if he can divide you, he will conquer you. Paul says to stand, to stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, means to face the opposition united. Remember, I say it's a warfare. There's opposition out there. Yes, I know you're saved and sanctified and you're going to hell again and hell, but there's an adversary, there's an enemy out there to try to kill you. Jesus said that Satan came to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So, unity is essential in the home. You ain't got no unity in the home. You got trouble. Hmm. If everybody want to do their own thing, even in a family, you've got trouble. Right. You, you have to learn, even in a family, stay in your own place. Stay in your lane. Children ain't got no business trying to raise their parents. Stay in your place. Uh-huh. If, if there's no unity in your business, it's going to fail. You got to be together. If it's in the church, if there's no unity, the church is going to be lack and it will soon fail. So, so unity is essential in the home and business and in the church. So Paul says stand. Stand for the truth. Stand up for righteousness. Then he says you need to strive. Mm -hmm. That's in the same verse. Verse 27. You see it? I believe you see it. He says, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Now, you either laboring for Jesus or you're not. Hmm. And many of us who have a name on someone's church's road or roster are not laboring for Christ. They're laboring for themselves. Christ is not in what they're doing. Whatever we do, whether it is our occupation, whether it's our profession, whatever it is, Christ should be the center of it. Amen. Yes, we're doing things, we're doing business, we're doing all these other things, but our, our goal is to please God. Amen. So Paul says strive. Strive means to contend as in a context. The idea of cooperation is here, suggesting that a group of athletes cooperate as a team against the opposing team. Mm -hmm. Strive means to contend, mm -hmm. to compete, even to confront. <coughs> Strive means to go after. You got some folk in the church that never went after anything. <laughs> I don't know if I'm telling the truth. Got to go after things. Go after things. Not just for you personally, for your own personal reason, but for God, who has been better to you than you've been to yourselves. So Paul says, strive. Mm -hmm. You see, Satan's team are matched against the church of Christ. In other words, Satan teams against you. I don't know how good the devil may make, may make it look. His team, Satan and his imps, 
is against you. All right. If you're a child of God, he's against you. Now, if you want to live, he ain't against you. He ain't got to worry about you because he already got you. But if you are a Christian, his team is against you. So then, the contest, and we're going to face Satan and his team, the contest calls for teamwork. The contest calls for a pulling together. Are y'all with me? Okay, let's, let's see if I can use the football, since it's football season, football analogy. Y'all know about football. Some of y'all don't really know about it, but you know about it. A football team gets its signal, and then every man on the team strives together All right. to reach the goal. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. If the church would strive together in one spirit, mm -hmm. like a football team strive together, they're trying to reach the goal. They're trying to reach the goal line, right? right. <clears throat> trying to make a touchdown. So if the church will just come together and strive together in one spirit, with one mind, and carry out God's program, the world will soon know about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, God, get me right here. Amen. Got to talk right here for a minute. There are so many of us, and we're carrying the word Christian as part of our name. We are Christian. But we do more for the world than we do for Christ. Mm, yeah. We do more for worldly things than we do for spiritual things. Oh no, that's the truth. Hey man, with you, but you need to get it together. Because one day, sooner or later, and probably sooner, God is going to be sick of us. And when we get to that point where we know we have the more for the world. When I say the world, I'm talking about more of the things of the world who's not God and then we do for God and when we get in trouble, the first person we will call on is God. Amen. And I believe God has a sense of humor. Yes, he does. He's going to say, well, why you ain't calling them other folks you didn't deal with? <laughs> why you ain't calling those others that you're spending all the time with? Why you ain't calling these other places you've been going Listen, and listen carefully. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves us, and He has given us choices to make. All right. But we have to make sure that we make the right choices. You see, our efforts together must show the teamwork of the training and the discipline of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You said all the folk in church be doing stuff and the Holy Spirit can do it. <laughs> but they blame the Holy Spirit. Y'all know anybody like that? Don't be scared. You know anybody like that? Say it again. <laughs> but being in church and they say God says, They said, God said, and you have, you know, got these prophet lines. <laughs> Be even on national TV. Yeah. Say, God said this and this is going to happen, and it ain't never happened. Amen. So you prophet lied. Amen. That there are many, my brothers and my sisters in church, they are saying stuff that God didn't say for them to say. Okay. Uh-huh. And, 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 and they're not showing teamwork of the training and discipline of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you direction. It will give you information. It will tell you when to speak and when to shut up. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. so, so we are to strive together for the faith of the gospel. Jude chapter, if you don't have to train that, but I'm going back to Jude chapter, um, Jude chapter 1 chapter, so Jude verse 3. Jude verse 3 says, Beloved, 
when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend, strive for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. God has saved us. So we ought to strive and contend of, for the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Saints, we must go all out. You don't hear that? Go all out in unity. We have to stop being divided because of something we don't like. If the word of God says it, that says it. Go all out in God in the unity of the spirit that our united strength shall be used to spread the faith of the gospel of Christ. So let us unite and move forward in victory. Things are going to get worse. I know you thought I was going to get better. <laughs> Things are going to get worse before they get better. Because even the church, the children of God, haven't learned what they need to do in the midst of crisis. All right. Just like it was taught in, in Christian Adventure this morning. Children of Israel, they do all right for a minute, and they committed it back to the old. Everybody in, this, in the deep in there was praying like I don't know what a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But a couple of days later, we went right to the same thing. Hmm. Died and good. God loves us so that He allowed things to happen so we can get our attention that we have a closer walk with Him. Yeah, I know, yeah, you know, you know, we prayed and it didn't, it's long and hit telling us it hit it hit somebody. So there's just something that you know that good that it didn't hit you. And don't think there wasn't some good people in the area that it hit. But thank God that you were protected. And so now if he protected you from a storm or from a tragedy or from trouble, he protected you from that so you would understand that I need to do more or be better for God. So now, I have a few minutes so I got to Such a task of being united. It calls for some, some things. To be united, to be a united family, it calls for some things. Mm -hmm. To be united in your business, to be united in the church. Wherever you're going to be united, it calls for boldness, it calls for fearlessness, and it calls for courage. You see, a strong family just don't happen. Somebody was bold enough to tell somebody in the family when they were wrong. All right. Somebody was fearless in telling somebody when they need to get their life together. Somebody in the family had some courage. And the same thing for business, and the same thing for church, is that it calls for boldness. If you want to be a child of God, you can't be a winner. Because the devil will jump on you and beat you up. You have to be fearless and have some courage. Paul continues his request in verse 28. This is what he said. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Paul is telling the believers not to allow the opponents of the gospel to frighten or to intimidate them. Mm -hmm. The devil is bad now. Don't think he, he, he is well. The right. devil has some power. But don't let the devil, regardless of how much power you think he has, don't let the devil uh, 
uh, allow or don't let the devil intimidate you or frighten you. Because if Jesus Christ has all power, and that same power that he has, he has given it to us, that we have power over the devil, although the devil has some power. But the devil don't have all power. But the God we serve, who has all power, has given us that power. So don't let the devil, don't let the adversary, don't let our enemies frighten us or intimidate us. You see, our banding together for the faith of the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Right. Jesus died for our sins. God raised him for our redemption. Now we have power to live and to live life abundantly. So, so our banding together for the faith of the gospel shows the enemies of Christ the useless of their efforts to oppose us. Mm. You see, when we're together, we have power. Amen. We have more power. Right. When we are together, God blesses it because he says, well, there are two or three. Such an agree, I'll be in the midst. Yes, amen. So, 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 we can show our enemies the uselessness of their efforts to oppose Christ. On the other hand, the oneness and the steadfastness of the saints assures them of a God-given victory. Hmm. Do you know you have the victory? Doesn't matter what you might go through, you still got the victory. Amen. Yeah. No matter how bad you feel, you still have the victory. No matter how, how far you fall, you still have the victory if you are in Christ. Amen. Yeah. So Paul told them to stand. And he told them to strive. Then Paul changed course a little bit. He told them to suffer. See, many of us will have dropped off right there. Because we don't want to suffer. We don't want to go through anything. We don't want to be challenged. So Paul says, you're going to have to suffer, brother, brothers and sisters. That's in verse 29, the last verse. For until you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to do what? Suffer, suffer for what? His for his sake. Let's unpack that for the next few minutes. Paul concludes his request by reminding them that they are called to suffer. What does that mean? Yes, there's no around it. You've been called to suffer. It's going to happen. Mm. I don't care what kind of theological degree you have or divinity degree, yeah. you're still going. Suffering. I don't care how long you've been saved, there's some suffering. The Bible says that Job was a man that pleased God, but guess what? Job did what? Suffer. suffer. So, so we're going to suffer. We, we have been called to suffer. Mm -hmm. This verse, verse 29, tells us that the privilege has been bestowed upon us to suffer. Why? Because our Savior suffered. We have to suffer like Christ and for Christ's sake. I don't mind suffering for somebody who died for me and set my spirit free. Amen. I don't mind suffering for Christ. He died for me, paid my sin debt in full, that I can have life and life more abundantly. I don't mind suffering for him, but we have something we don't mind suffering for their spouse, their children, or grandma, or papa, but don't want to suffer for Christ. Hmm. Well, Grandma, she's good. Papa is good. But they didn't die for me. They didn't set my spirit free. They didn't pay my sin yet. If they could, they probably would, but they couldn't. Uh-huh. So, so we, 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 we have been restored. It has been restored upon us to suffer like Christ and for his sake. You see, my brothers and my sisters, faith in Christ and suffering for Christ is inseparable experiences. Yeah. If you have faith in Christ, 
you're going to suffer. Very fact that anyone identifies himself with Jesus Christ will result in his suffering for his soul. St. John chapter 5, verse 20 says, If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. That's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall Suffer persecution. Shall mean it's going to happen. All right. yes. mm -hmm. However, to believe in Christ, to be one of Christ's own, to believe in Christ in our day means the very opposite of suffering and hardship. What do I mean by that? Well, stay with me. It has come to mean in our day, that the believer now has a place in a church pew where he or she can sit snugly and smugly. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, to be a believer in Christ just be having a, a, a place that you can come to church on Sunday mornings when you feel like it, in a place that you sit. Don't give me any praise. Don't thank you. Was sit in your own hole and say, make me happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when the child of God takes his place in the battle against evil, the devil will see to it that he or she has plenty of enemies in opposition. All right. So Paul speaks of such suffering as a favor granted of God. God's son, his beloved son, Jesus Christ, did what? Suffered. So it is, a, it is a favor granted of God. Actually, it is a part of the grace of God. So if you have God grace through faith, then you're going to what? You're going to suffer. So if we're going to understand and keep the unity in the body of Christ, then we need to understand that we need to stand, we need to strive, and we don't need to suffer. All right. Nobody wants to suffer. We don't want people to be those part of, of our walk. It's a part of the grace of God bestowed on Christians when we are called to share the suffering of Christ. My brothers and my sisters, I know this was a shallow message today, but hopefully it will cause you to think about the importance of unity. Again, the word of God teaches us where there is unity there is. We can do some great things. We can have some, some, some schools. We can own some shopping centers. We can do a whole lot, even in our culture, in our race, if we just understood the power of music. Right. Yeah. They've been laboring us for years that we're like crabs in a barrel. <laughs> and most of the time, that's true. But we can change that. It's never too late to change it. We can change that suffering may defer today in meaning from its meaning in the early days of the church. Because like I said, nobody wants to suffer for Christ, so we don't want to suffer, so we don't get involved in ministry. We don't get involved in loving and laboring for God. Because we don't want nobody talking about us. We don't want nobody saying, well, I saw them down in Bridgetown giving out, giving away food. Because I don't need to be in French town. Well, you better you better have French town back in you. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy down there now, but back in the day. Yeah, you go down there, you you can see three or four shoes of covers in one, one night. 
I experienced that as a young, young, young man. I'm going to French town with my friends. Yeah, I ain't go back down there night no more. <laughs> I saw a shoe and a, a cutting, and one of the other person would have got cut when he outran the woman at night. <laughs> I was 18 years old and had experience for this time. Yeah. I saw that. That was one night experience. <laughs> so, 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 so we we have to suffer. We have to go some places that we are not going to feel comfortable. We have to do some things that's not going to be comfortable. But when we unite together, and stand and strive and understand that we're going to suffer, we can be that light that sits over here. We can be the, the light of the world. We can be the salt of the earth. It's different. The, old, the, the, the first century church, they suffered because it was a new way. It was a new dispensation. They're talking about Christ. And if they heard you talking about Christ, they would kill you. But they stood. And that's what Paul was telling them. I want you to stand regardless if I'm in your midst or not. Stand for the truth. Amen. Amen. As I close on today, the early church experienced some tough times. Yeah. Yeah. Today's church may not mean bodily torment, imprisonment, salvation, and even death. But get this. It will always be a price one pay when he or she sincerely identifies him or herself with Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. There's no flower bed to be on this journey. There's no carpet on the racetrack. On this journey, there's going to be some storms. There's going to be some trouble. There's going to be some trials. There's going to be some tribulation. In other words, there's going to be some suffering. Right. But thank God to him who's able to keep us from falling. Yes. Amen. The only wise. Yes. Amen. The one who says that who, whatever is in my hand, no one can pluck out. Amen. Thank, thank God you. for Jesus. Yes, yes we, may, we may suffer with him, but we shall also reign and we suffer with him, we will reign with him. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you today to stand, to strive, to suffer. It's always been the experience of those who know the Lord Jesus Christ. So when trouble comes, just know who to turn to. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When problems come, just know who to, when affliction comes, just know who to turn to. Amen. He has declared, yes. I'll never leave you. Thank you. Thank you. For in the midst of my trouble, I got a telephone. It is not supported by AT&T. Yes. Not supported by Sprint. Horizon, but I got a telephone in my bosom. Yes. I can rim up from my heart. I can call them in the midnight hour. Yes. You'll go off the beat path. Yes. You'll make midnight house calls. Yes. So, 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 we we understand that we may have to suffer. We experience the suffering. We experience these things because of who we are. Because we love Jesus Christ. It was Paul's experience when he wrote this letter and it is his urgent request of us to understand the importance of unity. Yes. Unity in the body of Christ because it's one body, one faith, one Lord, yes. and one baptism. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. If I suffer with him, I shall reign with him. If I reign with him, I can have what I need and some of the things I desire. Yes. Because he promised to supply my every need. Amen. Won't he do it? Yes. Have you ever tried it? Won't he show you the need? Won't he make you sick on your journey? Yes. Won't he raise up the fire down to him? Yes. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah.
We know that you give joy, joy unspeakable. Yes. Pray now, God, that you continue to bless the body of Christ yes. as we face trials, tribulations, and torment. Help us to stand. Yes. Help us to strive. Yes. And help us to understand that we must suffer because we know that our Savior suffered. Yes. But because we suffer with him, we suffer with you, we will reign with you. And when the dust is settled, we know that we are victorious yes. through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these your people henceforth now and forever. They all say it. Amen. 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 Have a blessed week.